Hi, I'm Sandy Scheller with the Chula Vista Heritage Museum and the South Bay Historical Society. I'm in the Chula Vista Public Library where we have the exhibit Ruth, Remember Us the Holocaust. Uh, my mom is Ruth and she survived the Holocaust. She was one of 12 people that we feature, including my father, and the stories are quite incredible. Um, January 12th, 2020, we opened the exhibit. It was a great ex opening. And we went until March 13th, which is when we found out about COVID. That was 61 days that this exhibit was open. When the exhibit closed, up until today, it has now been 108 days that the exhibit's been closed. So we're going live, we're going virtual, and I'll take you on a tour. Come with me. Well, it hasn't been one of the best closings, as you can imagine. Um, you'll notice we have a broken case. And unfortunately, during the COVID time, somebody, it's not anti-Semitic, and I want to get that out there now. Somebody did break into the case. And with the case broken, I guess now I can show you things in detail. So what we have here is the dress that my mother was working on in Czechoslovakia. Everything was put in suitcases. And here you can see a photo of them. Go ahead and zoom in if you can so you can see the photo and the skirt. What I also have featured is a sewing machine that was used. And of course, without electricity, it's great because they could sew. When you're sewing, it only takes one stitch at a time. It's a 1914 Singer, and these were imported. One of my favorite articles, or ends. And this is on August 15th, 1945. I'll work with the case later. Come on over here if you can, and you'll see we have Bella Mark and his brother Daniel Mark. Twins, can you imagine? Twins. And Daniel passed away on, in October this year, this past year. What's interesting is that his granddaughter and his uh, great-grandson came to the exhibit, and then we found out because of COVID that we had to close. If you zoom in, you can see Paul Schauder, and you can see Fanny Schauder. They had an egg ranch, and their story is quite amazing. I'll make it a point to talk about each case, but today is just an overview. And on this wall, you can see my mother's artwork. You can see her documents. And now, I think I'll fix the case. Well, it could have been worse, and we're very, very lucky that it was not anti-Semitism. Uh, it was somebody who was homeless and used the library and couldn't understand that they were going to be shut down for a while. So hopefully uh, we won't see this again. What we have here is case number seven. And in case number seven, you'll see an old violin. What was interesting is during the times of the concentration camps, the violin was so important. There's actually violins of the hope in Israel where they collected the different violins. With this particular violin, it's German. It was made in 1938 and it belonged to my husband's father. A little story about my mom, Ruthie. Ruthie played the violin and she had a Nazi teacher 
And whenever she played the violin, if she played a wrong note, she used to get hit on her fingers really badly. Well, Ruthie just didn't like going to violin class. And um, needless to say, she developed a rheumatic fever or scarlet fever, one of the two. And as she survived, her mother went to her and said, Ruthie, now that you've survived, I'll buy you anything you want. I'll buy you any doll, whatever, clothing, anything that you want, I'm going to buy. And Ruthie's answer to her mom was, please, mom, never let me see that teacher again. I don't want to play the violin. What's interesting is she loved Yitzhak Perlman, absolutely loves him. And what's interestingly enough is that when she hears violin music, when she used to hear it, she would cry. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I do the same thing too. Moving on to case number six. Grew up in a musical family. My father played the accordion. Uh, you could see my father in 1939 coming over on a ship, of all things, where he was playing the accordion. I'm really blessed that somebody was able to find this photograph for me and um, send it so that I can share it here in the Ruth exhibit. If you come over to this wall over here, the left wall, you'll see a picture of a Nazi woman, the Nazi guard, and her name is Gertrude Heise. And what I have here is a story about Gertrude Heise. So when you come to the exhibit, do make it a point to read about her. Ruthie knew of Gertrude. Gertrude actually pointed a gun at my grandmother, of all things, because she thought my grandmother was gossiping. And as it turned out, uh, she got sidetracked and didn't cock that gun. Turns out that Gertrude is 97 or 98 years old, and I think she's still alive. I do try to follow it. If she happens to go up for a trial, would I go to Berlin? Sure, I'd like to know what the outcome is. Over here, we have case number five. It's a very difficult case to watch, and yes, I'm going backwards. Um, you could see where the markings were on the back of the dress and on the back of the outfits. When I wrote my book, I took that particular logo of, tr of Try to Remember, Never Forget, and you can see that my mom is standing next to the dress. In fact, at the very beginning of this presentation, you saw the cutout of my mom. And this was the inspiration for me to document my mother's stories, which were so important. Coming over here, we have case number four. You can see that right after the concentration camp, my mother wanted boots replaced because everything she had was taken. This was a photograph that was shot two days before going into Theresienstadt. Now, I know one of your questions. One of your questions is, how would I have that photograph? Well, the reason I have the photograph is because a non-Jewish relative saved all the photos and after the concentration camp Ruthie saw the camera it still had the film in it and this was what was in the film you can see documents here's one of um, Ursula Israelski her father and if you zoom in really closely you could see how people are marked Yud. Over here, you can see my father's passport, Kurt Sachs, with the J. Right away, you're marked as being Jewish. I believe it's the last time that my father held something of a swastika. This is probably the most important case in the exhibit. It talks about the 12 people that we feature in the Holocaust exhibit. And what I have here are original photographs that were found and stored from the Nazis. These stars happen to be replicas of what they wore. Starting from here, we've got Mark Fischoff, and the story is about Mark. You can follow him throughout the case. Next one is Renee Vogelhaber, Lily Hecht, Bella Mark, Kurt Sachs, Ruth Sachs, Paul Schauder, Solomon Schlosser, Max Weinstock, Ursula Israelski, Sid Wapner, and although she was not in the Holocaust, I include Ona Yuffie because she was in the United States and in the 30s she 
suffered a tremendous amount of anti-Semitism herself, where she would walk to school and she was called Dirty Jew and some very, very nasty names. So I really hope you'll come to this exhibit. By the way, we have it written in English and in Spanish. Case number two, you'll see the only photograph of Solomon Schlosser that he is holding with his family. So you're probably wondering, why is there so much Ruthie stuff in the exhibit or my family? It's because people were not as lucky as being able to save these things. So I did everything I could to incorporate what they had. You can see an old typewriter. Can you imagine? This was their form of communication. They did this all without iPhones, computers. Pretty tremendous, huh? If you look on the back wall, you can see Ruthie. And yes, she was a very spoiled little girl. And if you look really carefully, you could see when she was just under a year old. These are the boots that she wore. It's from the Peters Wither, uh, Witherbird Shoe Company. They're probably made in the United States, but they had manufacturing in, in uh, um, Europe. And if you look carefully, you can see the village where Ruthie grew up. It wasn't just one particular house. They owned the three houses. And when she came back after the concentration camp, everything was completely destroyed. Whoa, we have to fix a case here. This is the first case. And the whole thing is to figure out what is the Holocaust? What exactly happened? Why did people go after Jews? And how were Jewish people portrayed? If you look here on this wall, you could see how in their Sturmer magazine, they made the Jew to be somebody, a very evil person, a very ugly person, a very money hungry, grubbing person. Not very nice. If you look at this particular portrait of here, that's from a children's book from the 1938 uh, version of The Poisonous Mushroom. You can see how Jews were compared as a mushroom. And what they were saying in this book is, look how evil the eyes are of a Jew. Look at the nose of this Jew. Can you trust the Jew? And uh, this was the propaganda that was used in Germany. We'll talk more about it in our Comic-Con panel. If you look over here, you can see the map of the Holocaust. Um, it's not even all of them. I wish I could have found a map that had them. But you can see the kind of foam that was used in Europe. This particular picture down here, if you look to the um, left, is my grandfather from 1904 with his brothers. We talk about Aryan. Aryan is somebody who is the German blood. Somebody with the blonde hair and the blue eyes and basically looked like this. Gerbil had a contest many, many years ago in, in, in the 30s to find the most beautiful Aryan child. Come with me. If you look over here, you can see this particular child. Well, guess what? He picked somebody who was Jewish. She's still alive today. Her name is Hesse Levinson. And um, I guess we're beautiful. In this exhibit, we have Rich Walker, an artist whose art on third, which is here in downtown Chula Vista. And when I approached Rich, I told him what I was doing about creating a Holocaust exhibit. And he was so kind to be able to take the feeling through art in the exhibit. This one is called Time Destroyed, Life Taken. And I believe that it really represents. Let's go over to the other one. As we approach the exhibit, you can see the other art piece that Rich did rose above the ash. Look really, really carefully at this piece. It actually has a rose. You can see the petal of the rose. And what happens over time? And it gives you a feel of survivor. It's one of my favorite pieces. And now you can see an overview of the exhibit.
Let's go talk about what's in the cases. This is Auschwitz. My mother survived Auschwitz. And this was the dress that my grandmother wore in Auschwitz. It's the only piece of clothing she had. No underwear, no bra. It was the only thing she had. And in the hem of the dress, she would hide things. There were lots of little holes in the hem when I saw it. In fact, she even had a gold tooth that she hid in the dress. Let's go back over to this case. And if you focus, you can see the suspended case. In case number five, you can see a tooth that is being suspended. That tooth had a little bit of gold in it. My grandmother broke her own tooth and hid it in the dress that was given to her because had the Nazis found any gold on her, she probably would have been murdered for it. We talk about the Armenian genocide. In this particular photo, you can see the grandmother of Summer Stefan, our district attorney. And also you can see her grandfather. The whole back row of this photograph in, from 1918, all the men were killed. And how this photograph survived was that a relative was traveling to the United States of all things and just happened to have a copy of this photograph. But all the men that you see perished. During the Armenian genocide, you can see a photograph here of a piece of clothing. Look at the details of how every possible scrap was used just to stay covered. My father and mother corresponded through letter writing. There were no phone calls, maybe one or two uh, telegrams, but they wrote 1,500 letters between the two of them. In the exhibit, I do show a sample of the first letter that my father wrote my mother and my mother writing my father. Meet Solomon Schlosser. He's a wonderful, wonderful person, author, and yes, if you look at his arm, you can see that he survived Auschwitz. Ursula Israelski, she's a volunteer here at the Chula Vista Public Library. She was a Holocaust survivor, and she loved ballet. If you look at this back photograph, you can see her. Let's see if we can remove the glare. There we go, let's get that little glare bomb out of there. And you can see Ursula and her love for dancing. And she wrote this wonderful, wonderful article, What the United States Means to Me. This is Ursula's mother. She died right after the Holocaust. Ursula was in hiding and the mother was sent to Auschwitz. After the concentration camp, she was unrecognizable, 69 pounds. Ursula saw her one time, and she was sent to Switzerland, where she passed. Jack Yuffie and Oscar Storr, they were twin brothers. When the children were approximately a year old, the mother and father got divorced. And the mother took Oscar, and the father took Jack. To hide Oscar, he was in the Nazi youth. And Jack came to the South Bay, where he worked. Eventually, in 1954, he met his brother for the first time. Here in Chula Vista, we are so lucky because of the support that we get, and the fact that Ruthie went to different schools, talked about the Holocaust, and now as a second generation Holocaust survivor, it is my goal to continue speaking about the Holocaust because of the lessons that Ruthie taught me. You can see a photograph of her where she is speaking to the military. 
And yeah, she even received her honorary degree. It's always so wonderful when we receive letters from students that tell us how the presentation affected them and the vows they've made to have no place for hate and in their own personal life that they're going to be kinder to everybody. This is really a fun case. It shows you what the Holocaust survivors of the South Bay did. There were two people that owned furniture stores. That was Max Weinstock and Mark Fischoff. Sid Wapner owned a fabric store. Ruth and Kurt Sachs owned a grocery store. And then my father became a stockbroker. And Fanny Schauder and the Schauder family had an egg farm. It was a wonderful egg farm. And you can see some of the advertisements that they used when they were promoting their place of business. In the late 50s, Temple Beth Shalom of Chula Vista was created. And there were quite a few Holocaust survivors who belonged to Temple Beth Shalom. What you can see here is the original Torah case, Torah cover, that was given to us by the Shapovs. If you look closely, you can see a photograph of some items that are of a cook and some uh, Torah and also some little metal pieces. Those were things that Ruthie made in the concentration camp. And the reason I have it in this case, she was featured with Ilse Grunwald. And if you look carefully in this particular photograph from the Star News, there's a little box next to the word Holocaust to the right. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. And you can now see what exactly was in that box. You can see my father's membership card, which is kind of cool. And here's a promissory note where they did have a problem many, many years ago when it came to finances and different people supported the synagogue because people understood the importance of having religious services here in the South Bay. We have two other temples in the South Bay. They're Chabad. One of them is called Eliyahu and the other one is Chabad of Chula Vista. This particular case features different Jewish items. I know we've got a little bit of a glare here, but these are the tefillin that are wrapped right here. You can see my father actually wearing the tefillin and how one is on his forehead bonding with God. You could see prayer books. During Hanukkah time, we have our menorah, our dreidels. You can see this great big wonderful um, menorah with Rabbi Mendy Biggin over here. You can see Mendy with Rabbi Goldstein from Poway. And I really love the support of everybody bonding together. This happened to be Ruthie's temple. You can see Ruthie in a photograph with Mindy just getting ready to speak about the Holocaust. There are Shabbos candles, wine cup, Abdallah. And you can see groups of people baking challah, getting ready for um, the Shabbos. This particular case features Dr. Bronner. Ruthie and I gave talks there and got to befriend the Bronner family and Dr. Bronner's parents, the father, was in the Holocaust in Auschwitz. He died there and here you can see how he was ridiculed as a child. Just think, they had a five gallon pail of pee and dumped over my head and says, damn Jew. Something we should never have to go through. Ruthie and Kurt were very close to Viktor Frankl. Believe it or not, my grandmother um, was very close to his brother who was killed in Auschwitz. And I make it a point to talk about Viktor Frankl. He wrote a book, Man's Search for Meaning, 
an amazing book. I really hope you can come to the library and check out this book. It's really great. And this particular case, you can read the poem that Lily's daughter wrote. A great, great poem about Lily and why she wears polka dots. So there's some hidden treasures here. This is a great photograph. If you look carefully, you can see my mom three months after the concentration camp with her friend Francis. And now you can see the two of them. They've both passed. I hope that they're together in heaven. Another great book at the Chula Vista Public Library is Anne Frank, something you might want to read. Although it's not in the library, and I hope that they'll get it, this particular book is called My Broken Doll. And we have um, Sprouts Market uh, here in Chula Vista. And this happens to be the aunt to Ron Cohen. And her name is B. Carp. She wrote this great book. I think I'm going to take this book and maybe read some chapters from it so kids can hear it. Oh, the things you find. Look at this thing that looks like a hat. And yet this was on Ruthie's wedding day. And it's really been fun putting this exhibit together because of the treasures. I love this photograph. I'm sorry we have glare here, but um, when you come to the exhibit, you'll be able to kind of see all the different things. Look at this, this is what, fourth generation? Maybe, yeah, fourth or fifth generation. Pretty amazing. I really hope you'll enjoy the exhibit. Take a look there. You can see the day that Ruthie was married. Believe it or not, she had a broken leg, but she had her cast off. There was no way she was gonna wear a cast. The USC Shoah Foundation which is probably one of the greatest ways of finding out about the Holocaust and documenting Holocaust survivors, came to the exhibit on our opening day and recognized this exhibit as being the first ever in the whole South Bay of San Diego. So we have a lot of pride in that. Over here you can see who our sponsors are of the exhibit. Cox Communication, Hoffman Insurance, Paradise Village, Protea Prime West, Rita Foundation, Seven Mile Casino, Sprouts Chula Vista, Sun Road. We're so lucky for the support that we've received, along with people like Mary Salas, who's our mayor, Joy Watley, our librarian, and special, special thanks to people like Kathy Severn, Wally Severn, Claudia Severn, and all these wonderful people that have made it a point to help us keep the memories alive of Holocaust survivors in the South Bay. Meet our supporters. We couldn't have done this without you. Until next time. Oi, oi, ich alleine mit meinen Augen gesehen.